archives. that when Mr. Manson was up in Independence that you sent him a list of attorneys who uh, you had confidence in. And of course there's nothing wrong with that at all and uh, it's, there's nothing uh, wrong with you know trying to help someone in trouble, especially if he's a friend of yours. Uh, and Mr. Wolf here will advise you at any time uh, that you might be, quote, incriminating yourself, end quote, because we don't intend by this conversation with you to give you any illusions that you have immunity or any other type of privilege or benefit. You understand that? Yes. Uh, we want to talk to you so that we can nail down a lot of loose areas and so that we don't have to waste our time in interviewing third persons. See, what happens when you interview third persons, like, I've got a uh, report here from some girl. Well, she heard someone say that she heard someone say that Tex Watson stabbed somebody. Well, it would be much better to interview Tex Watson and say, Hey, Watson, did you stab somebody? But you can't do it anymore because the attorney tells him to keep quiet. All right, and then the be next best thing to do is to interview the person that uh, this girl, Sherry, says she heard tell her. So now, let's go back to... Uh, the time that you first met Manson, when was that? Um, March of 68. And where was that? Um, it was in Topanga Canyon. And what was the occasion? Was it a party, uh, hitchhiking, what? No, I was picking up a friend. From where? Topanga Canyon, who was gone to see with Charlie. And I went out to pick him up, and I met them then. Uh, where were you living at that time? Um, we were drive. Right next to what is now been called the La Bianca residence? Uh, yes, 3267. And how long had you been living there? Since, I think, about September 67. And uh, who were you living there with? Uh, who was paying the rent, so to speak? There was four of us. Was, uh, Harry Yost and Ernest Baltel and Al Schwerloff and myself. I, and uh, <coughs> what generally was your occupation at that I time? I was a student working on my master's degree. Where were you going? L.A.C. And uh, when you met Charlie, uh, how did he impress you? Funny, talkative, personality type person. And from what you could gather, where was Charlie Manson living at that time? Uh, Topanga Canyon. You know. Well, it was, I guess, a kind of a deserted house or house or something like. I don't know whether it was condemned or what, but it didn't have all the facilities. It was just one of those houses in Topanga. And now, when you speak of Topanga Canyon, there's there's two Topanga Canyons uh, that we talk about. The one that goes from Ventura Boulevard all the way to Malibu, mm -hmm. and then there's a Topanga Canyon that goes, let's say, from Ventura Boulevard north to Chatsworth. Um, it's up into the mountains towards the beach. Ventura and the beach. In other words, so it would be in the yeah. Topanga Canyon from Ventura to the beach. And uh, uh, what happened on that occasion? Uh, the first time I met yeah. I just picked up my friend and uh, after just, you know, and, uh, introductions and so I left. And when yeah. was the next time that you met uh, Matt? Uh, they called and asked if they could spend the night in the house because they had to leave the house they were in and it would, there would be a day's time in between until they could go to their new house that they had arranged. And we let them stay the night. And so yeah, it was Waverly? A, yeah, it was a big house. Uh -huh. A lot of people stayed. All right, now, how did you get your, have your phone number to call? Uh, I don't know. Well, I guess maybe I gave him a map. And well, so it is hard to we get had, We had a we had map. There was four of us. It was a, it was really it was a party house. It was a big house and nice and so we had uh, these little maps printed up and we say we're having a party here. Here it is. 
to eliminate time and energy. Well, suppose uh, you met me and you were going to invite me to the party. Uh, how would you describe where you lived? Uh, Besides the address, I well, mean, would I you say it's I'd next say to near Sun Griffith Park. Yeah. I'd say near Griffith Park, and I'd ask if they knew knew of the fountain. The fountain. Because uh, we I'd say, well, your backyard overlooks it, and uh, I can't remember the street. What about that rich person's house that lives uh, two doors away? Um, would you use that as a description? I would. I always said that you'd go past a long wall, and then it was just right after that. Do you have oh, numbers in that big house with that long uh, wall? I think the guy. I think the landlady told us to only support him with some members. Do you ever hear the name Earl C. Anthony Estate? No. I just I dreamed and looked at it. All uh, right. Now, uh, at that time, how long had you been living on Waverly Drive? In September, when you first moved in. September would be 67? Yeah. And can you fix the time then as to whether or not it was before July the 4th or after July the 4th of 68 that Charlie Manson came over to your house? Mm. It was before. Before July the 4th of 1968. Now, you have in mind when July the 4th is, you know, mm -hmm. fireworks and things yeah. like that. Because I got my master's degree that time. That June? Uh, it, well, it was March, the win of the quarter system. Mm -hmm. And I was waiting to go into the Peace Corps. And so I was getting my business taken care of to go into the Peace Corps. And so... All right, now, when Charlie came up, did he come up by car or so, taxi or...? Uh, they had cars. And about how many people came with them? Well, the first time, I guess there was 15, and then other times when he would come to visit, it would either be him or maybe one or two girls. Okay. Now, did he s sleep over there that night? Just once, yeah. That first time? Yeah. Okay. Now, was it a week after, a month after, a day after? How many days, weeks, or months after that first visit that Charlie came up to see you again? Uh, I have no idea. He just, I know he came, like, after that time, he probably came and visited maybe a total of three, maybe four times at the most. When did you move out of the Waverly address? Um, I think about September, and then the other fellows moved out a little bit slow. Like, we're all staggered. We didn't all leave at once. You know, there's trouble, uh, some had trouble finding a place where I just moved my stuff to my grandparents and, like I said, I was waiting All right, so you say by September of uh, 68, October. September 68, you left, right? Mm -hmm. uh, was there any time while you were living there at Waverly that the police ever came and uh, complained against you disturbing the peace, or did you have any peace with the police at that residence? I think there was once. It was real early in the morning, and we were just taking somebody home or something and the police came at the foot of the driveway and said that they had a complaint and we said, well, everything, it's all over now. And they said, all right. And that was all. But there was never any time when and the police came in and... Uh, there was, as a matter of fact, I think an officer was one of our neighbors right across the street. All right. Now, uh, with relation to the date that you did move out, which was, say, September, you said one of your friends still continued to live there. Well, I'm not exactly sure when they all moved out. Right. It, it was roughly about the same time. Who was living there at the time that you moved out? Um, Ernest Balso and Harry Yost. Balso is spelled how? Yeah. B-A-L-T-Z-E-L-L. -L. And Ernst is... Ernest. Ernest, E-R-N-E-S-T. Yes. And what's his first name? Ernest Baltzell. Oh, no, it's the other fellow. Harry Yost. Yost, just like the baseball player Yost? Yeah. Was that before your time, Yost? Mm, no. How old are you? 29. Oh, you look a little older than that. Now, at the last time that Charlie came, can you give us an approximate time when that was, with relation to when you moved out? Oh, it must have been two or three months. He, because he wanted... He uh, came and asked the other people there if he could move in, and they told him no, because it was 
everybody, one guy was going into business for himself. And just, and Did you get the idea that Charlie was more or less of a freeloader, or was he going to pay his rent? Uh, well, he discussed conditions that he would, uh, like, he said that he would take care of the cleaning, and there would be food, and I can't remember if they were going to pay the rent too. I think they were, because I think somebody was on welfare or something, and they made, but I'm not sure, I wasn't. There. But the answer was no. Yeah, they told him no. He asked me, and I says I couldn't say. They, he would have to ask the people living there. And I wasn't. Now, in between the time that you first met Charlie and the time that you moved out of uh, Waverly Address, did you ever go out to Spawn Ranch? Once or twice. Was Charlie living at the Spawn Ranch at that time, to your knowledge? Yeah. Uh, did you ever go out to Dennis Wilson's place on the beach? Yeah. And would, was Charlie look like he had the run of that place too? Yeah, the Will Rogers house. Yeah. yeah. And then there was another one. Now then, after you moved out in September of 68, did you continue to see Charlie? I think I might have seen him once after September because, like, as I said, I was expecting to go into the Peace Corps. Did, and you, did, I, you, did you ever go into the Peace Corps? Yeah. And uh, when did you go in? Uh, end of February this year. End of February of '69. And uh, did you go away from I went, California? Yeah, I went to Ethiopia, and the country is very bad at killing people, especially so, white people, foreigners. And so the program blue, there is blue eyed white down. people, blue eyed white people, or yeah. all white people? Any foreigners. They just call them Ferengis, and you just all attack. And so the Peace Corps there is starting to. Terminate people and programs are closing. So I came back. What time did you come back? Uh, I guess this I think the end of May, middle of, of '69. Yeah. Uh, and uh, where did you go to live then? I stayed at my grandparents. Uh, and uh, say July 4th of 1969. Where were you living, or what were you doing then? I think I might, I think I, I was just, could have gone to Texas, because as soon as I came back, I went to Texas two times within a period of a month to see some friends. And, uh, you weren't at the Coliseum for the fireworks no. display, the American Legion? I'm sure yeah. about that. Because uh, I understand they had some big explosions out there. Uh, I, I just kidding. Go. I was kidding. All right, now, do you have anything to to fix your time, like uh, letters that you might have written from Texas or uh, bills that your credit card I, bills? Uh, I can find out. I wrote one letter. I didn't stay very long. Uh, what do you think you got back from Texas? It's like it, it's either the first. It was either you know sometime in June and July. The time I'm not. That you came back. Well, when, when I came back, because I came back, and then as soon as I was back, I wasn't here maybe a week or something, and then I went to Texas, and then back, and then I went back again. Did you ever go back to Waverly to see who was living there? <coughs> no, I never did. I heard some, some friends of mine mentioned that they went up to see about raining it, and uh, that it was up for sale, which the landlady told us that she'd run herself. Right, now, while you were living at Waverly, did you ever meet the Labiancas that live next door? I think some, I thought some old people were there. Well, could have very well been that... And I never saw anybody over there. I saw the garden. Could very well have been that they moved in. Do you remember Mr. Knuckles when they moved in? Or was it the beginning of 69? Uh, no, no. They lit, They had owned the house, but they had moved away and then moved back. But I could check the uh, transcript and find out then. Because I thought it was vacant. And then somebody told me no, it wasn't. All right, so now, he was a gardener. Uh, on uh, August the 10th or August the 11th, it was published in the papers and on the television and everything like that about the uh, killings at the Waverly Address. Did you remember reading about that? Mm -hmm. I, I don't think I read about it, but I you know, heard about it through television. And at the time, I didn't associate the two. You didn't associate and then until I saw like an interview, and I said, that's my house next door. I used to live. All right, now, where were you living at the time that you uh, realized that this 
killing occurred in a neighborhood that you used to live in? Uh, with my fiance, staying with my fiance. And uh, would, would that be right about the time that it happened, or within a couple of days thereafter? What was it? Yeah, the question was, when, when you first became aware mm. that the killings of Sometime these... Sometime around, like when it first came out, or a few days after. And did you do anything about uh, contacting Charlie? Yes, Anne? Okay. And I'll shut this off. Yeah. These are just all of the people that were arrested. The pictures are showing you all of the people that are arrested, either August the 16th or sometime in May of 69 by the Sheriff's Department. Do you want to know if he knows any of these people? Yeah. Say this Barbara Jean uh, Rosenberg uh, looks familiar, but yet you she can't. Knows, but I don't. Like I hadn't seen Charlie like uh, until I saw he was arrested, and I wrote the letter saying asking, and then when I saw him in jail, the first time I've seen him. I right, now. Uh, when uh, you heard about the people the LaBiancas getting killed and that this was in this neighborhood. Did you have any ideas at, at all as to who could have done such a ghastly no. thing? Just like the first the first impression I think that I realized was that it was, was next door. Uh-huh. And uh, I guess just like I guess when any crime happens next door, the thoughts that go through your mind. Yeah, I didn't know. I, you feel sorry, but then you feel lucky that it wasn't you. And those. Right. Now, at that time, uh, when was it? A, a, a week, a month, three months? When? Were, how long had it been since you had seen Charlie Manson last? Um, let's see. I think maybe October or November of '68. Uh, and where was it that you saw Charlie? Spawn's Ranch. And what? What impression did you have of him then? Just a happy-go-lucky hippie with a way out yeah. look? Well, well, I thought Charlie was just a great con man, a P.T. Barnum. And he used to, you know, he'd say, uh, come along. And he always, you know, wanted to... I guess he wanted, like, an older male to help share the burden. And that was the impression I got from him. And asking for me to join him. Was Tex Watson living with him at that time? I think so. Charlie gave me a truck. So I'd loaned Charlie two hundred dollars, and my car broke down, and I needed a car to go back and forth. And he loaned me a car, and it was in Watson's name, but I don't. What kind of car me. was it? Nineteen thirty-five Dodge pickup. That was the truck that the marijuana was in. We tried that case. If you mentioned. Oh, with that other fellow, Cotton? Who was the co Chatelet. 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 Cotton. What's happened to Cotton? Uh, he's either in jail or just out of jail. I don't know. How long had you known Cotton? I, I don't want to go in there because, you know, it's all past. You were acquitted on that thing. Uh, uh, how long have I known? Maybe a year now. And uh, this truck that you were riding was the one that Watson had given to you? Well, Charlie. Charlie it gave. was in Watson's name, but Charlie said, here, you can take the truck. 
And then did you ever return the truck to Charlie? Uh, <laughs> no, it was impounded. I went and I told him that the, the truck was impounded and that in order to get it out, he would have to go out and show proof of ownership. Do you know what ever happened to that truck? No. A friend of mine said he saw it in a junkyard out in St. Paul. That rampart impounded Vertels. From there. Whatever the PD does with them, or the Bell does with them, so that. Do you ever get the two hundred dollars back from Charlie? Mm. Now, uh, would that incident uh, with the truck be about the the last time that you'd seen Charlie? Yeah. Now, uh, let's see. I can give you some dates from the times of that incident. I have the file here. What impression did you get of uh, this guy Watson when you uh, met him that time? No impression. It was just real free, casual meeting. Let's see. The arrest on that truck deal was September 27, '68. What you spent about a day or two in custody? Uh, a day. And then you had your preliminary hearing. Uh, it was right after that. October 20, October 8th, you had your preliminary hearing. You were out on bail at that time yeah. already. So between the time I was released from custody and the preliminary hearing, I went out and told Charlie that the truck was impounded. And that he would have to show ownership. And then I saw him once more after that, and that was, I think, either in late November or the 1st of December when I got notice from the Peace Corps that I was going. Well, February 24th, you were acquitted in uh, Judge Hayden's court, and then was it right after that right that after you went the, to the Peace Corps? Yeah. All right, now then your next deal was uh, the 15th of July, 69, when you were arrested up at Sunland Park. Was that Sunland Park? Yes. Uh, Foothill and Sherman Grove. And uh, by that time, uh, you had been back to California how long? Uh, since a month, maybe. Okay, yeah. and uh, you gave us a residence address, 113 South Clark Drive. Is that your grandfather's house? Yes. And you said you were a student at UCLA. Were you attending some classes? At no, I have an application. I, I came down with hepatitis, and I'm supposed to start this winter quarter. I'm starting my PhD. Uh, now, uh, how long did you spend in custody on this bust in July? A night. And uh, you got out, and uh, about how many days after that did you have your preliminary hearing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't, huh? I don't. Did, you didn't represent no. him at the preliminary. What, the public defender represent you? Yes, at the preliminary. All right, and. Uh, then at the uh, after that you had an arraignment in uh, out in Van Nuys. Public defender represented you then too, and uh, then the case has been continued from time to time. Yeah. But now uh, the first time that you heard about Charlie being involved with the Tate and the LaBianca killings was when he was everything hit the newspapers around the first of December. Is that right? I'm not sure that they did, but when it came out. And uh, what did you do first? Did you write him a letter, or did you? Uh, no, I didn't do anything at first, and then it just, and then uh, other than saying, you know, like it's just like I guess any anybody you know that happens, you just uh, you have trouble believing it. All right, so and now, so then uh, people, lawyers contacted me and then I also so how did they contact you because they knew you knew uh, through friends that you know the first thing uh, I have a friend of mine who has an attorney service and a law student he's close and I just started talking to him about it and I guess he mentioned it to other people and so he said that a lawyer wanted to uh, talk to me I, and uh, you don't have to tell us 
who the lawyer was, but you talked to I had no objection to oh. telling you. Oh, okay. It wasn't me. Was it Ira Reiner? No, it was uh, George Grove. George Grove. Grove. Okay. Uh, then uh, you made had contact with Fred Schaefer, who was uh, Manson's lawyer up in Inyo County. And uh, you sent him up a list of uh, lawyers. Just two, two names. Two names. Uh, was Ira Reiner one of them? No. Myself and Grove. Oh. And uh, then you sent Charlie a letter saying that anything you can, I can yeah. do to help you, let me know. Yeah. Did he answer you? I sent back a letter saying, uh, uh, it, was, it was just it's a cordial response. Like At first he didn't remember me. And then he said, yeah, he remembered me and that I was a, a good friend. And that's how I said. And... Uh,